pleasure to present my results here. Uh, today I will tell you about no rainbow problem and I will tell you about the complexity of the subjective consensus section problem. And I will start with the definition of the consensus section problem, which you probably know because this is a CSP seminar, but I will repeat. So let A be a finite set and then uh, let gamma be a set of relations on A which we call uh, the constant language. And then for every constant language gamma, I can see the decision problem CSP over gamma, given a conjunction of relations from gamma, and we need to decide whether it has a solution. And my usual example, if we are on three element domain, we have two predicates. For this instance, we don't have a solution. For this instance, uh, we have a solution, for example, zero, zero, zero. So what we know about this decision problem? Uh, the complexity of this problem is known from 2017 from our result with Andre. So we know that if gamma has a weak polymorphism, then uh, this problem can be solved in polynomial time. And in all other cases, the problem is in P-hard, so in P-complete. So for CSP, everything is known. We know which problem are easy, which problem are difficult. And uh, today, I want to talk about subjective consensus, constraint satisfaction problem. So everything is the same, but this time we are looking for a solution which is subjective. So again, for every uh, constant language gamma, we have a decision problem, SCSP over gamma, uh, given a conjunction of relations from gamma, and we need to decide whether the formula has a subjective solution. That is a solution such that any element of our domain A appears in this solution. So we have additional global constraint that the solution should be subjective. Uh, example, if you are on three element domain, we have just one predicate X is less than or equal to Y. Then for example, this instance has a subjective solution, for example, zero, one, two, two. But if you consider this instance, then uh, in any solution, all uh, variables should be uh, equal. So it has a solution, but it doesn't have a subjective solution. Okay. And the main question I'm addressing today is what is the complexity of the subjective consensus satisfaction problem for different constant languages gamma? Okay, uh, one trivial example. Assume that we have three elements in our domain, three colors, and we have just one predicate equality. Then any instance of this uh, problem can be viewed as a graph like this one. And for example, this graph has just two connected components. And uh, it's clear that it cannot be colored into three colors. So we can color it into two colors. And this means that this instance, this concrete instance doesn't have a subjective solution. And also it's easy to see that this problem is solvable in polynomial time. So to solve this problem, we just need to count uh, connected components. And if we have more components than uh, the elements in our domain, then we have a subjective solution. Otherwise we don't have a subjective solution. Okay, so for this constant language, everything is simple. And then I wanted to show an example when surjective CSP is harder than CSP. Uh, so it seems that we have a three element domain, zero, one, two, and we have just one predicate in our constant language, X is not equal to Y plus one. So this predicate is not symmetric. That's why uh, when we draw a graph, we, we want this graph to be directed. Okay, uh, what is easy to see? It's easy to see that uh, this instance always has a, uh, trivial solution, for example, zero, zero, zero. Okay, so CSP over this language is trivial because we can always say yes. But if you try to find surjective solution, for example, if we start with red color, then uh, we may see that all these vertexes are either blue or red. And if you try to find the solution, we can, uh, and if you put some, uh, put blue color to some vertex, then we should get this. Anyway, my point is that this instance doesn't have Subjective solution. And actually, we can prove that uh, this problem isn't complete. I don't have a trivial proof of this fact, but this is just an example uh, when subjective CSP is harder. So it's easy to check whether we have some solution, but it's NP hard to check whether we have a subjective solution. Okay. So let's compare CSP and subjective CSP. What we know? As I already mentioned, uh, the complexity of CSP is known for all gamma. The complexity of subjective CSP is widely open. Uh, okay. uh, it's easy to see that CSP over gamma can be phenomenally reduced to subjective CSP. In fact, we uh, can always add the dummy variables we never use. And using these variables, we can uh, make any solution subjective. 
So we can take any instance of CSP and look at this instance as at instance of subjective CSP. And uh, as uh, we saw from the previous example, sometimes subjective CSP is harder than CSP. Okay, another trivial observation is that subjective, subjective CSP can be reduced to CSP over gamma with constant relations. And here we are talking about Turing reduction. How we do this? Assume that we want to find a surjective solution. Uh, assume that we have S elements in our domain. So to get a surjective solution, we need to guess S variables taking all different elements from our domain. So we just guess this S variables and then we add such constraints. So we put this uh, values to the corresponding variables. And as a result, we get an instance of CSP over gamma with uh, all these uh, constant relations. Okay? And it's easy to check that we have polynomial many guesses. And that's why this is polynomial reduction. So we can reduce surjective CSP to CSP. Okay? And uh, Hubichen conjectured that uh, it's also true in another direction. So he conjectured that C uh, surjective CSP over gamma is equivalent to CSP over gamma with all constant relations. And actually this conjecture holds uh, for two element domain. So we know that for any constant language on two element domain, the complexity depends only on this, on the complexity of CSP over gamma with all constant relations. Okay. Uh, another reason why this problem is uh, interesting and uh, should be studied is the graph homomorphism problem. So what is graph homomorphism problem? It seems that if you have a graph H, then h Kalvin problem or graph homomorphism problem is the following problem, given a graph G, and we need to decide whether there exists a homomorphism from G to H. And standard example is when graph H is just uh, inequality on three element domain or just triangle, uh, then finding a homomorphism is equivalent to uh, graph three coloring. So actually graph homomorphism problem here is equivalent to CSP over inequality. And we know that CSP uh, in some, uh, can be formulated as uh, not a graph homomorphism problem, but uh, structures homomorphism problem. Okay. Uh, but yes, today I want to talk about surjective graph homomorphism problem. Again, we have a graph H and for a given graph G, we want to find a surjective homomorphism from G to H. And in my opinion, this is a very natural question. You just given a graph and you want to find a surjective homomorphism. Okay, what we know about uh, this problem? Uh, the complexity of uh, graph homomorphism problem for undirected graphs was described uh, in 1990. And uh, uh, in 1998, it was proved that graph homomorphism problem is as general as CSP. So for any constant language gamma, we can find a graph H, undirect, uh, directed graph, uh, such as CSP over gamma and uh, homomorphism over H are equivalent. So we know that these two problems, CSP and graph homomorphism problem are uh, in some sense uh, as, as in some sense equivalent, yeah. Okay, uh, and uh, from our result with Andre, we know the complexity of this problem for any graph H. What we know about surjective graph homomorphism problem? Uh, we know that this, uh, the complexity of this problem was described for all partially reflexive forests in 2011. Uh, then in 2005, the complexity of this problem was described for all graphs of size four other than C4F. C4F is uh, just four cycle, reflexive four cycle. And uh, then in 2011, this problem was, uh, um, it was proved that this problem uh, surjective graph form of homophys problem for uh, surjective for cycle is NP complete. And uh, in 2017, it was proved that this problem is NP complete for six cycle. And so, what is great about these uh, surjective problems? The great thing is that uh, even for very simple graphs, 
uh, the complexity of the problem is not trivial because if we look at uh, you know, 2015, uh, when uh, this pedagogical conjecture was not proved yet, we didn't have any concrete uh, example of a constant language with uh, unknown complexity, any simple concrete example. And here it's really interesting because you can take any graph like, C, uh, like six cycle and for this six cycle, uh, the complexity of this problem is uh, highly non-trivial. So it's really a difficult question and it was open for many years. Okay, this is another motivation why we should study this surjective problem, surjective graph homomorphism pro problem. Okay, and now my favorite uh, surjective CSP. Consider two element domain. So we have just zero and one. And we have just one predicate, x1 equals x2 or x3 equals x4, just disjunction of equalities. Uh, what is the complexity of this problem? Let's consider uh, a concrete instance of this problem like this. Uh, again, we can look at this uh, instance as a graph, but this time, instead of edges, we have pairs of edges. So if you look at uh, the first constraint, it's uh, just this pair of edges. This is uh, this pair of edges, this pair of edges, and so on. And so what it means to find a subjective solution, given pairs of edges, and from every pair, I need to, we need to choose uh, one edge so that the obtained graph is not connected. And in my opinion, it's really a natural question, and it's really beautiful. You just given pairs of edges, and you, you need to choose one edge from every pair. For example, for this concrete example, um, this instance has a subjective solution like this. So we can choose one pair from a, every uh, one edge for, uh, from every pair. Okay. Okay. So what is the complexity of this problem? Let's start over. Um, consider this instance. So we have one variable on the top, one variable on the bottom, and all the remaining variables are uh, connected with both of them. So we add this constraint that every variable is either equal to y or equal to z. So if we consider this instance, then what? Uh, it's easy to see that this graph is connected if and only if y and z are connected. Or in other words, uh, this instance has a subjective solution if and only if uh, y and z are different. So in any, um, no, uh, this in, okay, let me start again. Uh, any subjective, in any subjective solution of this instance, y and z should be different because any other variable is either equal to y or equal to z, okay? And that's why we may assume that uh, y is zero, z is one. Because in any subjective solution, we either have this, y is zero, z is one, or another way around, y is one, z is zero. Okay, so we may assume that y is zero, z is one. And then it's easy to see what we can do. Then we can add this pair of edges, and adding this pair of edges means adding this constraint x1 equals x2 or x4 equals 1, okay? And if we add this pair of edges, this constraint, this is equivalent to adding this condition, x3 equals x4 or x1 equals 0, okay? And so what uh, I'm talking about, I'm claiming that CSP over this constraint language can be reduced to our surjective CSP. Yes, because uh, we can, uh, the first two constraints, we already showed how to uh, get them. And the last two constraints are just uh, constant relations, x1 equals zero or x1 equals one. And to get this uh, constraint, we just identify xi and uh, y and or xi and z. So what I'm saying, I'm saying that subjective CSP over gamma is NP complete. And this follows from this reduction. So we uh, uh, defined reduction from CSP over this constant language to subjective CSP over gamma. And this reduction is uh, really easy. Okay, let me try to explain uh, the main idea again. So we start with this instance and what we know, we know that in any subjective solution, Y and Z are different and they take all elements from your domain. And we still have a freedom to choose XI. And that is the main idea. So we start with this instance and then we add all the constraints we need. 
And that's how we prove that this problem is uh, uh, NP-complete. And I'm not the first one who proved this. Uh, as I said before, uh, the complexity is known for two element domain. But for me, this is a cool example, and this is um, the first interesting subjective CSPI solved. Okay, and now no rainbow problem. This time we have three elements in our domain, zero, one, and two, or you may think about three colors, uh, red, blue, and green. And uh, then uh, I consider a relation, ternary relation, uh, which consists of all tuples such that not all elements there are different. And that's why it's clear why it's called no rainbow problem. So if all colors are different, it's rainbow. And that's why this relation is no rainbow. Okay, uh, then no rainbow problem is just surjective CSP over R. So given a conjunction of relations uh, R, and we need to decide whether there exists a solution. So we need a solution containing all three colors. Uh, and yeah, we are interested in the complexity of this problem. What we know about uh, this problem? We know that this problem appeared in graph theory many years ago, I don't know when exactly. Uh, we know that Manuel Badirsky offered 50 euro for the solution for the complexity of this problem. And it was also many years ago, I believe 10 years ago or so. Uh, I know that Hubichen formulated this problem as a concrete constraint satisfaction problem with unknown complexity. And he presented this uh, problem many times at the conference. Probably even I heard uh, two talks by Hube about this problem. Uh, what is also trivial to see and easy to see? Uh, CSP over R is trivial because uh, we always have a trivial solution zero, 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 zero. Okay, so CSP is easy. And uh, um, what if we uh, consider subjective CSP over R with all constant relations? Uh, it's clear that uh, CSP over R with all constant relations Subjective CSP uh, is equivalent to CSP of R with all constant relations, and that's why this problem isn't P-complete and P-hard. But then in 2012, uh, it was proved that even if we have just two constant relations, this problem isn't P-complete. So subjective CSP over R and just two constant relations isn't P-complete. <clears throat> and uh, one of the main results of my talk is uh, uh, the fact that subjective CSP over R is NP hard. And that's why it's NP complete, of course. Okay. <clears throat> and now about the proof. How do I prove this? What is the idea? Uh, actually, what I tried to do, I just tried to generalize my uh, proof for disjunction of equalities. So, what I tried to do, uh, this time I have three elements in our domain. And so I need three variables, V, U, and W. And my plan was to find uh, and to build an instance such that in any surjective solution, V, U, and W should be different, should uh, take all elements from our domain, zero, one, and two. So that's what we want. That's what we want to achieve, but we don't know how to achieve this. Okay. But anyway, I just tried to copy what I had for the equality. So in the uh, equality case, I had just one piece like this. And here we have three pieces like this. So what else I want? Uh, yeah, and uh, assume that we achieve this. Assume that somehow we know that V, U, and W are just zero, one, and two, okay? And um, what we also want? We want all axes to be from the set zero, one. And to achieve this, we just add this constraint, R of V, U, X, I, okay? So R says that not all uh, variables are different, which means that XI should be from the set VU and VU is just zero one. Okay. We want all Ys to be from the set one, two. And to achieve this, we add this constraint. We want all Z to be from the set zero two. And we add this constraint. Okay, what else we want? We want uh, Ys and Z to be uniquely determined by axis. So the only freedom I want to have uh, in axis. So that's what I want. I want yi to be equal to xi plus one, modulo three. And I want that i to be equal to uh, two xi. And to achieve this, I just add these three constraints. Okay? 
And for example, you may check that if uh, xi is equal to zero, then uh, u is one, then yi can be equal to two, then y, y, yi is one. And then if you look at the third constant here, if yi is one, b is zero, then that i uh, can be equal to two, so that i is equal to, uh, to one. Uh, no, to zero, yeah. So anyway, you may check that uh, the three constraints uh, guarantee that we have these two conditions. But we still have our assumption that V, U, and W are exactly zero, one, and two. Okay. Then uh, again, we want to encode constraint satisfaction problem, which is NP hard. And again, we want to encode uh, the same constraint satisfaction problem. So I want to express <coughs> uh, this constraint. And to do this, I just write this, R of xi, xj, yk, yeah? Because if xi and xj are equal, then it's true. If xi and xj are different, then one of them is uh, zero and one of them is one, then yk can be equal to two. So yk is one, which means that xk is zero. Okay, and if I want to write this constraint, I just write this. Okay, so uh, I almost have everything because I can encode these two constraints and uh, that's why I can encode CSP that is NP hard. But now I want to be sure that V, U and W are actually different. And to achieve this, I just add all possible uh, constraints that are always true. So I just checked what constraints are correct for any choice of axis. And so I found this constraint and I just added all of them. So for example, for every i and every j, I add the constraint that uh, x i, z i, and y j cannot be all different. And why this is true? Uh, x i and z i, uh, what we know about them? If x i is zero, then z i is also zero. So that is, then it's true. If x i is one, then z i is two. Then uh, this is true because every y is from the set one, two. So uh, the problem is that now I'm not uh, explaining uh, why the proof works and I'm explaining how I get the proof. So I started with the first part, then I added the, all these constraints and it turned out that this is enough. It turned out that after I added all these constraints in any subjective solution, V, U and W are all different. So somehow I was just lucky. And so I proved that CSP over this constraint language is reduced to subjective CSP over R, okay? But the general idea is exactly the same as for the junction of equalities. I started with an instance, okay, yeah, we'll keep it. I started with an instance having this property that in any subjective solution, three concrete variables take all the values from your domain. And this is the main idea. Okay, and that's how I prove that this problem isn't complete. Okay, if you have any questions, please ask. Okay, if you don't like this proof, I have another one. Um, let's prove that CSP over not all equal on two element domain uh, can be polynomial reduced to surjective CSP over R. How we do this? Uh, consider an instance of uh, this CSP. And now I want uh, to assign a binary operation fi on three element domain to each variable xi. And uh, in, uh, what I want to achieve, I want fi to be the first projection if xi is zero, and I want fi to be the second projection if xi is one. So uh, what I'm trying to do is something similar to uh, what is popular for promise CSP uh, when we consider minor conditions and so on. So what I do, uh, I'm saying that uh, I'm claiming that uh, the instance i is equivalent to the following conditions. These conditions are not actually minor conditions, but when I invented them, I really wanted to write minor conditions, but I didn't succeed. Anyway, what conditions should we write? First of all, I want uh, all these operations fi to preserve our relation r. And we know uh, what operations preserve R. Uh, we 
have two types of operations preserving R, either the separations are essentially unary or the image of the separation has just one or two elements. So we have just two types of operation preserving R. That's what we know from clone theory. Okay, uh, second condition. I want to get the same function after identification. Then I don't want to explain now the third and the fourth condition. And then for each uh, constraint not all equal over xi, xj, xk, I add the constraint like this. And what is the meaning of this constraint? If uh, fi, fj, and fk uh, are, are the same projections, right? Projections on the first variable, then I get a contradiction because I get 0, 1, 2, which violates uh, the relation R. But if at least one projection is different, like fk is the second projection, but fy and fj are the first projections, then it's okay because what I get is 0, 1, 0. Okay. And what I'm uh, claiming, I'm claiming that uh, all these conditions can be written as an instance of CSP over R. Yeah. Because what I actually do, I encode every uh, function fi with nine variables. So for me, fi of zero, zero is one variable, fi of zero, one is another variable, and so on. So I encode every binary operation fi with nine variables on uh, the domain zero, one, two. And then I can write all these conditions as an instance of CSP over R. And what I want, I want uh, CSP over not all equal to be equivalent to surjective CSP over R. Okay. And in one direction, it's really easy because if uh, you have an instance of, uh, not a, of CSP over not all equal uh, with a solution, then to get a solution of uh, our surjective CSP, we just uh, use this assumption that fi is the first projection if xi is zero and fi is the second projection if xi is one. And you can easily check that the first condition holds because all our operations are projections. Uh, the second condition holds. Uh, you can check the third condition, for example, if we read the first part, um, if fi is the first projection, then we get x, y, and fj returns either x or y. Um, I'm not sure whether it's possible to follow. Anyway, you can easily check that all these conditions hold. And if you look at the fifth condition, this condition holds uh, because uh, for fi being projections, this is just equivalent. Okay, so in one direction, it's really easy to check this. Uh, how to uh, check in another direction? So assume that these conditions are satisfied. And uh, if you write this, instance of CSP over R, this instance has a surjective solution. How to prove that we can find a solution of CSP over not all equal, um, that we can find a solution to the instance E, yeah? What we do? Uh, consider this function G uh, and consider three cases. If this G is a bijection, then what we know? If this G is a bijection, uh, then uh, from the first condition, we know that every fi is essentially unary. Yeah? And then what we do, what we, do we just put uh, xi equals zero if fi depends on the first variable, and we put uh, xi equals one if fi depends on the second variable. And that's how we get a solution. And again, uh, using condition five, we can prove that this is actually a solution because it doesn't matter whether fi is just projection or bijection of one variable. This fifth condition uh, works in the same way, okay? And then we uh, need to consider two more cases when uh, image of G has just two elements and when image of G uh, has just one element. So G is a constant. So if image of G has just two elements, then we can easily derive from the first two conditions that uh, image of every fi has just two elements. And these are the same elements. And that's why we cannot have a surjective solution because the third element of our domain can never appear. And the only remaining case when uh, g is a constant and then uh, we can find fi and fj such that uh, in the 
uh, image of fi fj we can um, we can find all three elements of our domain and that's why we need condition three and condition four so we can actually prove that we can violate one of these four constraints which you can see in the condition three of and condition four okay so that is an idea and uh, if you look at this proof you will see that this proof is not very different from what you uh, saw on the previous slide so again what we know we know that in any subjective solution this g of x should be a bijection which means that three different values should appear in a three concrete places in three concrete places so the idea is very similar almost the same and the only difference is that here it's easier to explain why it works it's easier to look at the separation than uh just to check many cases proving that in any subjective solution v u and w are different okay is it clear yeah probably i should ask you which proof is better <coughs> Okay, uh, so uh, the first main result of my talk uh, is a theorem saying that no rainbow problem isn't incomplete. And uh, here I want to repeat Kubitschen conjecture describing the complexity of subjective CSP over gamma for all constant languages gamma. So it says that the complexity of subjective CSP and complexity of CSP over gamma with all constant relations uh, are the same. And this would be really amazing because this would characterize everything. And this is really simple. And everything, again, uh, depends on polymorphisms. So that's what we actually want. And uh, if you look at my results, my result confirmed the Hubitschen conjecture. And so after I uh, proved uh, that no Redmond problem isn't too hard, I spent a couple of months trying to prove Hubitschen conjecture at least for three element domain. And I know something for three element domain, so I checked many cases, and in each of them, I actually proved this conjecture. And this was till the moment I found the counterexample. So I actually found a uh, constant language gamma, such that subjects with CSP over gamma can be solved in polynomial time. But CSP over gamma with constants isn't too hard. So unfortunately, uh, this conjecture doesn't hold. Okay, and now I want to show you this counterexample because it's really simple and uh, I hope you can understand why it works. So uh, we have just one five array relation. So here columns are tuples. Okay, and if you look at this relation, what you can see, you can see that the first variable uh, should always be zero. The next three variables should always be from the set one, two. And the last variable can be, can be any element okay and uh, what i claim i claim that subjective csp over r can be solved in polynomial time okay uh we know everything about the complexity of csp uh so we know that csp over r with all constant relations isn't too hard and uh the worst thing is that if you define relation r prime like this so r prime is just projection of r onto the middle three variables r prime is just projection you may check that subjective csp over r prime isn't too hard yeah so we have a five array, array relation and for this five array relation the problem is easy but we consider projection and for the projection the problem isn't too hard and this is really terrible because uh, obviously every operation preserving R preserves R prime. And this means that the complexity cannot be described in terms of polymorphism at all. It's not only about Hubbard conjecture. It's uh, just in general. You cannot write a condition that uh, you need some kind of polymorphisms um, for the problem to be tractable. It's not possible. Okay, so uh, if you look at the three lemmas, uh, Lemma two is known, lemma three uh, can be easily explained. Oh, let me try to do this. So uh, if you look at uh, R prime, this is a constraint on two element domain. And uh, for two element domain, we know everything. 
So the complexity is the same as uh, if we just add all constant relations. And if we add constant relations to this R prime, then we get CSP, which is NP-hard, okay? So lemma two is known, lemma three is known. So the only open, uh, not open question, but uh, the only lemma without proof here is lemma one. And now I will try to explain why lemma one works, why surjective CSP over R can be solved in polynomial time. Okay, so that's what I want to prove. I will need another relation sigma. This sigma is just equality on two element domain, one, two. Okay, and what is the idea? The main idea is that if you look at this relation R and you restrict the last variable of R to the set one, two, then after this restriction, uh, relation R uh, comes very easy. So it's just a conjunction of sigma and unary relations. So if we restrict the last variable to one, two, then relation uh, becomes very easy, like this. If you restrict the last variable to the uh, set zero, then again, your relation is very simple. Okay. These are just two simple observations. And how we use this? Algorithm, how to solve surjective CSP over R. So if uh, somewhere we restrict uh, the last variable of R to a smaller domain, we just simplify as we showed before. And uh, we achieve one consistency, simplify and so on and so on, keep doing this. And after we did all of this, we have two options. Either we still have some R, and in this R, uh, the projection onto the last variable is the set zero, one, two. So if we still have some R, then what we do, we, uh, th then I claim that we always have a surjective solution. And to get the surjective solution, I just send variables with uh, domain zero, one, two, to two. I uh, send variables with the domain uh, one, two, to one. And I send variables with the domain, just uh, one element set D to D. So that is the idea. So if I have an instance, first I simplify, if after all the simplifications, I still have this relation R, then I can just try the surjective solution, okay? And uh, it's really easy to check why it works. Because if you look, you look at the relation, then the only difficulty is in the middle, is uh, in the R prime part, yeah? But uh, in this middle part, I can always put one to all the uh, variables. That's how I can kill the complexity. So, okay, so what I do again, I simplify R if it's possible, if I restrict the last variable of R to a smaller domain. And if after all the simplifications, I don't have any R, then I have an instance where uh, with only sigma relation and unary relations. And this instance is really simple. So I just simplified something and uh, I ended with sigma and unary relations and of course, I can check whether I have a surjective solution or not, okay? So that is an idea. And uh, that is, uh, I don't really like this trick. I believe this trick somehow can be avoided, but I don't know how. But right now we have this counterexample that the complexity cannot be described in terms of uh, polymorphism because we just uh, take a projection and as a result, our problem is more complicated. Okay, this is a proof of lemma one, and uh, I'm almost done, but I was too fast. Uh, let's summarize what we have. For two element domain, we know the complexity, and uh, this complexity agrees with Hubitschian conjecture. Uh, for many uh, graphs, H, uh, the complexity of surjective graph form of this problem uh, is known, and uh, you can look at the survey, at the survey of Padirsky, Kara, Martin from 2012 to see a lot of uh, examples of graphs H and their complexity. And all of these results were consistent with the Chen conjecture. Uh, in 2014, Hubichen proved that if gamma has only essentially unary polymorphism, then uh, surjective CSP over gamma isn't complete. 
And actually, this result is sufficient to prove uh, classification for two element domain. Because on two element domain, it's always true that, uh, yeah, the problem isn't hard if and only if we have only essentially unary polymorphism. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> this year, uh, in March, I proved that no random problem is in the heart. Then I found a counterexample to Hubitian conjecture. And then a bit later, uh, Hubitian published a unification of the hardness results. So uh, Hubitian generalized uh, my idea for the no rainbow problem and uh, published a paper with uh, explaining this approach. So actually something good is happening and this is happening this year. So this is a good uh, problem to think about. So I really recommend. And we still have uh, a question, we still know nothing. We don't have any conjecture on how to classify the complexity of subjective CSP. Even for three element domain, we don't have a conjecture. And uh, I'm not sure about Hube, but I really don't have any conjecture on how to formulate, how to formulate this. Okay. And the final slide of my talk. I want to show Hubitian conjecture again. And um, I, I want to ask, what conditions do we need for this conjecture to hold? For example, um, does this conjecture hold for a uh, subjective graph homomorphism problem? So if we have just one binary relation in our constant language, is it still correct in this case? Because in my counterexample, I essentially use uh, the arity of uh, relation. So my relation should be of high arity. That's what I use. What if we uh, forbid this? What if we can see just one binary relation or probably several binary relations? So is it true that the conjecture holds for binary constant languages? Or another question, what if our constant language is closed under projection? So I'm just trying to kill my counterexample. So if it's closed under projections, is it true now or not? But of course, the main question for me is uh, I really want another simple, concrete, constant language with unknown complexity. And that's where I hope Hubichan can show me some. Because right now, I don't have any concrete example. OK, that's actually everything I wanted to tell you. Thank you for your attention. And yes, special uh, thanks to Hubichan, who introduced me to the problem. and. Uh, uh, actually, I was so much attracted to this problem that I printed and posted this problem at the Moscow State University, and uh, um, I even offered 500 euro, not 50, but 500 for the solution, and I was lucky because I don't need to pay now. Anyway, thank you. So, thanks for the talk. Um, very, very inspiring. Very. It's concerning at least a little bit. Uh, are there some questions, remarks? Yeah, we still have some time. I can repeat uh, something. So, if, if I may, a few questions. So, so or, you, question. Uh, sorry, sorry, then I'll go ahead. Yeah, so you said you don't know any concrete uh, relation for which uh, you don't know the complexity. What about, like, you mentioned cycles, like, is for every cycle it is known if you want homomorphism? Because um, you said like even C6 yeah, yeah, is yeah, only yeah, answered. Yes, yes, yes. It's, it's a good question. Actually, yeah, I, I don't know. Probably you're right. This is another good example, but I'm not sure whether eight cycle is simple enough. Yes, probably it's simple enough. Yeah, it's, it's a good example. I should ask Hubi whether it's known or not. Probably it's not known because if uh, for six cycle, it was proof in 2017, so it's really recent. Yeah, probably right. Yeah, so I wasn't sure uh, about these graphs and the graphs. So is it open even for like proper graphs so symmetric uh, relations, symmetric binary relations, or do you mean digraphs in general? Okay. So since uh, it's undirected or directed? Uh, okay, uh, C4F uh, is, uh, uh, yeah, these are undirected, yeah. 
these are undirected so it's undirected. open for undirected as well yeah I, I, I yes I, I think it's open for undirected but I'm pretty sure that you it's better to ask Manuel Badirsky I'm pretty sure he knows more about uh, graphs and subject I think, it's open, problem. I think it's open and uh, so one more question or maybe two more uh, so in your example uh, the the uh, subject is CSP, which is tractable, but your your country example. So you claim that one consistency solved the problem. Is the correct algorithm? Um, is is that? Um, well, okay. You reduce to this uh, equality. So yes. Yes. Not, yes. Yes. I, I I I use this reduction first. I'm not sure it can be. Mm. Mm. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah but yes, yes. What, what I'm saying is that if we do this reduction, every time we reduce the domain of the last variable, we do this reduction and also we achieve one consistency. And then I claim that, yeah, everyone consistent has a solution. So every, every, everyone consistent having R after all these reductions. Because well, using, yeah. using R, we can, like, here the problem is that. Okay, if you look at the relation R prime, the problem is that we need to use both one and two. It's easy to use one because one, one, one is correct, but it's not easy to use two. And here I use the fifth variable of R to put two there. So I put two there and everything else became trivial. So I put one in all, the, in all other places. So actually I tried to think about this just to find a new conjecture, but I didn't succeed. And if I may, one more question. So you proved that this uh, tractability is not preserved under uh, existential quantification, right? Oh, yes, yes. That's what, uh, yeah. what you were unhappy about. Uh, yeah. So is it closed under uh, conjunction? Or do you have country example showing it's not closed under conjunction? So even say partial polymorphisms? Uh, no, I, I believe for partial it should be should be correct because we can always, yeah, let me think. Yeah, for partial it should be correct because uh, if you replace one relation by a conjunction, you still use the same uh, elements in both of them. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yes, so for conjunction, yeah, it, it definitely works. And uh, yeah, that's another direction I wanted to think about. I wanted to invent some other types of polymorphisms which would work here, or I don't know, some kind of positive primitive definition, but not really positive primitive. I don't know. If I may make a comment, Hubi Chen has in his 2014 papers the results in this direction. So some yes. safe that you can use. Uh, no? Mm, uh, could you repeat, Manuel? I think Hubi in his 2014 paper that you also quote here. Yeah, he proposes yeah. some safe gadgets that you can use to make complexity reductions. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so it would be some partial clone theory, but uh, should be more, there yeah, should be more theory than just partial clones, hopefully. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, as far as I remember his idea from this paper is that, uh, it seems that we can see that all, um, I don't know, so you have a constant language and we consider all binary operations preserving this constant language and as in Galois correspondence we uh, define this uh, relation of arity size of your domain to the power um, to your arity yeah so this relation can be defined using just conjunctions and that's what you can use. So to define this relation, you don't need existential quantifier, and that's why you can use this idea, this structure for subjective CSP. Mm. That's uh, what I remember. But I, I believe now Kubitschen uh, understands much more. Uh, for me, it was difficult to read uh, his paper because it's too abstract for me, but uh, I believe the idea is uh, very similar to what I did in my proof for the disjunction of equalities and for no rainbow. I just start with some uh, uh, instance with some freedom. So I can choose 
freely some variables, but I have a general property that if I have a subjective solution, then in this subjective solution, these several variables give me everything. So anyway, I'm pretty sure that Hubichen knows much more um, about how to generalize all these hardness results. And I really want to ask him whether he has another conjecture now. I probably he's not here today. I think he's not here. Are there some more questions, conjectures, or? I would like to thank uh, Dima that, that he solved this uh, and for the nice talk. You really deserve the 50 euros now. Huh? <laughs> Uh, but let me ask you, did you submit it already for publication? Yes, I submitted this. Uh, uh, I, I have a scientific advisor, uh, Barnaby Martin, who sent me advices where to send my papers. So I uh, <laughs> submitted, <laughs> I submitted uh, my paper to uh, the SODA conference. Ah, very nice. But I, I still don't. Uh, actually, I got some replies. The guy didn't understand. Uh, my second proof, but he agreed with the first one, so I, I hope it's enough. <laughs> <laughs> so, has the price uh, been already paid off, or but no. now are we waiting uh, until it, uh, it gets reviewed? Wait for a physical uh, act uh, to be transferred. Uh, I can also make bank transfer, uh, but get it published. Yeah, that's important. <laughs> Uh, inflation is, is yeah it's inflation so I, I'm going to get much more right <laughs> after the Russian events I already have 10 percent more <laughs> okay some more questions if not let's uh, thank uh, Dima again for coming.